Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the farm. We are entering the final stages of the chicken coop project. So we're working on, we gotta get some purlins put on, get the roofing material put on, button up the last few things with the coop. And we're getting really close to the end. So stay tuned and this will probably be the last part of the whole chicken coop series. So check it out. Now you can see we got our first couple of purlins installed. These here, one high, one low, and then we'll do the same on the other side. The purlins are what the roofing material is gonna sit on. It'll gap it up off the truss a little bit. We'll feel it out there. Just gotta bow it back. Happens to be a bow. is probably making this sound horrible, but progress. All right, so now what we're gonna be working on this morning, we took these 10 foot roof panels, we cut them down in half, so they're in five foot sections, and then these are gonna go over top of the, the coop area. Here's the first half installed. So now we'll come over here to this side, get a little footage, kind of show you, show you the process, show you how we ha we're hanging it. So now that the roof's on, what we're gonna start working on is getting some predator barriers installed in these eaves up here. So I'm cutting down this half inch hardware cloth into 12 inch strips and then we made this break out of these two by fours and that allows us to put it in there and get a perfect angle on it so we can staple it up inside there. Thank you. 
Got this big tom out here showing off for the lady over here. And little stardust. <laughs> About to make a mistake if she thinks she can handle that big boy. Well, we got a couple quick things done on the coop today. I'll climb inside here and give you a little peek at it. So we got the doors installed. These are the uh, the chicken, you know, access doors. And we built these little tracks for it to slide up and down in. So there's a block at the bottom that has it sitting at the perfect height for the, the door outside and then a block here at the top that you know, only lets it come up as high as it needs to go. And then this chain, eventually, it's gonna come up to a pulley up here and then come out the front wall here. So there'll be, uh, you can pull it from the outside, hook it, and then you can do all that from the, from the outside. And we got the same done on the other side. Same exact thing, sits in the track there goes up to that block, comes down and sits on that block. And then a look at it from the outside. Dad put these together over in his shop. And I used the same T11 material that we did for the siding for the face of the door so it looks the same. And then we used the scrap that we cut off when we did the pieces here, up and down. We had these perfect sized scraps that we built the gangplank, a little runway up to the door that the girls will use to climb in and out. So what we're working on now is we're putting these flashing up, putting this flashing up on the roof. We've got our first piece cut and broke up on the peak there. So dad's securing it up there. We'll come over here and we'll trim this side even with the, uh, the edge of the roof right here. And then this will be our piece for around back. Now I've moved here to the inside. What I'm gonna be working on is I am gonna be painting all of this non-treated wood here at the bottom um, where all the bedding and stuff is gonna be just to get it sealed. I don't think I'll have much issue with moisture with the deep bedding that I'm gonna do. But just to you know, kind of be double sure, I'm gonna go ahead and seal it up with some paint. And then dad's out here, he's outside working on the purlins out over top of the run areas. So kind of doing a little divide and conquer here now. Now it's these cut plywood edges that I'm really trying to make sure that I hit to get sealed to make sure if you know moisture gets in there, they'll start to come delaminated and you know, they can start to come apart. So I'm, all these cut plywood edges here, up top here, going across here, really wanna make sure I get all those sealed up good. So it's kind of been all over the place for the past few days. Um, the times that I've been coming out and getting little things done here and there, dad been coming over getting little things done here and there, us getting stuff done together. So we do a quick walkthrough, kind of get it caught up with what, what all is done, because I know I've missed a few things over the last week or so. So we have the roof up. Um, we have the ridge vent installed at the top. We have our flashing installed here on the edges. There'll be a little another piece of roofing that'll go on top of the nesting box here. We got that piece of flashing cut for the top, but we did not cut the piece of roofing for the top. We figure we'll probably have some scrap um, when we do the, the area over top of the runs. So we're gonna wait and see what kind of scraps we have left there before we go cutting something for over top of the nesting box. We have our purlins installed on this side over top of the runs. 
We started to get our purlins installed over on this side, over top of the runs. We have our walk boards installed on both sides that the chickens will use to come in and out and access through their little chicken door here. Work my way around to the back. We have our doors in with our latches, so we have that all closing up tight. And then I got this all painted, I guess that was yesterday. So all that's really gonna act as is just kind of like a, a moisture barrier because that plywood on the bottom and on the sides here, you know, that's all non-treated wood. So I don't think that with the bedding, I don't think that much moisture will actually even make it down that far. But just to kind of be on the safe side, I went ahead and did that. And we got our another vent up there. And then on both sides here, up in our eaves, I don't know if you can really see it. Got the hardware cloth installed up in the eave. It's going to act as the predator barrier here on the sides. Maybe it'll be a little better on this side. Yeah, you can see a little better on this side. So got that predator barrier installed all the way across here to make sure that you know nothing will be able to climb up on top of this roof here and work its way inside and get after the girls. You know, raccoons, possums, you know, even you know a snake get in there, get the eggs, mice, rats, all of the above. So yeah, I gotta get, just get a couple more purlins here on this side. We are a couple of boards short, so we'll get those picked up. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll be able to get those installed and we'll be able to start getting some of the roofing up here over top of the run areas. So once that goes up, the coop is pretty much done. All we have left to do is install a pulley on the, the chicken access doors. So I'll be able to open and close those. The, the, there'll be a, a rope or a chain or something that'll come outside here. And I'll just be able to pull on that from the outside and that'll raise and lower that door so I can shut it at night and then open it again in the morning before I head out to work to just kind of act as like a second layer of protection. Now, hopefully, if, if everything goes as planned, you know, no predators are going to be able to get into the run areas. So I shouldn't have to worry about them getting into the coop, but just kind of as another layer of protection, I am going to go ahead and open and shut that door every day. And once that door is in operation, all I really have left to do is install the roosting bars, figure out how I'm going to temporarily hang up the food and the water in there. Because once they have access to the runs, I'm not planning on having any food or water inside of the coop. I think that's just a little bit of unnecessary mess that I don't want to have to deal with. So I'll temporarily come up with somewhere to hang the food and the water inside of the coop. And then I'll get the roosting bars installed. I'll put in my bedding. And then Saturday's move-in day. So it went maybe a week longer than I wanted them to in their brooder box but the weather has kind of been a little bit iffy too we've kind of been pretty chilly in the mornings so playing it a little on the safe side you know they may be a little bit crowded in their brooder but they'll get over it and once they get moved out to the coop they're gonna be spoiled so like I said they're just gonna have to get over it here we are back inside the coop. So while I was at work, dad got busy again. Thank goodness for him. He got these uh, pulleys installed here. So this, you know, goes on a chain to outside. You pull this rope from outside. And that's going to be what operates the door down here. So he got this one put in with the pulley. And then the same over here on this side. He got the pulley installed and the chain running out the front. So since he got those put in, what I'm going to be working on is I'm going to be using these joist hangers here. And that's what I'm going to use to hang up my roosting bars. So they will slip in. Oh, doing it one-handed. They'll slip in here and here. I'm going to drill a hole and put a little pin in it to hold it in so they'll be removable. Do the same over there on that side. At least that's my plan. I think it'll be sturdy enough once I get a little pin in there, but we're about to find out. And now I've got all three of them installed. So uh, once the bedding gets put in, you know, it'll raise the floor up about eight or 10 inches. So this first one will be about 20, uh, 20 to 24 inches off the ground. And then they stagger up about 10 inches from each board. And they're spaced about 18 inches apart, give or take. You know, they kind of fell where the studs ended up. But, so you know, they'll be able to hop to this one and then hop up to the next one. And I believe, from what I've read, 
uh, with the roosting bars like this, it'll kind of be um, that pecking order. You know, pecking order is uh, the the saying comes from chickens. You know, there's like a, a social hierarchy to the to the flock or whatever. So whoever is at the highest level of the hierarchy will be up on the higher bars, and then the next lowest, and then the, I guess the the bottom tier chickens will be down at the bottom. Well, I walked out of the house without my camera this morning, but we started putting the roof up over top of the run areas here on the front side so that's what we're working on this morning we got enough material we're going to be able to get both these front sides done and get started on the back side We're 100% done here on the front side. So got the roof on all the way across here on the front. Dad got all these little pieces cut in here over on the nesting box. Got the little flashings done up on the sides and everything. And then here we got started around back. Of course, you know, this takes these little, little specialty screws. I don't know if you can see them up there, but they have a little, uh, rubber grommet on them and we ran out of those of course so we we didn't get very far here along the back we got the first four panels up so there's going to be three more that are going to go there and then we've got uh seven of them that'll go on that side as well so hopefully the forecast sticks with what it says it's supposed to be sunny the next two days so that'd give us uh sunday and then you know monday afternoon Hopefully we'll be able to get a bunch of stuff done, uh, get the roof finished, um, those last couple panels put on. There's going to be there'll be a ridge cap that'll cover this gap here. Ridge cap will go here along the top, and then all that'll be left is to put on the the chicken wire, the predator barrier on the outside, and we will pretty much be done. Um, I will be painting it at some point, but that might not be until the fall. Uh, kind of just ready to be done with this. So it doesn't really need to happen right away. So maybe, maybe sometime when there's more likely to be a longer stretch of good weather, that's when I'll get around to getting, getting some paint on it. And then the last thing I did is I was able to get all the bedding put in here. So it is ready for the girls to move in. So like I was saying, I will be moving the girls in. The, the inside of the coop is fully ready. So all I got to do is get a feeder and a water uh, water hung up in there and the girls will be ready to to be living in on the inside and then maybe in the next week week and a half maybe two weeks at most we'll have everything else wrapped up finish up the roof get the predator barrier up on the outside hang all the chicken wire we're going to bury a little bit around the edges to make sure that you know raccoons any of those you know burrowing type animals coyotes anything like that can't get up go underneath the fence and get inside of the run Well, we got to working and not filming again, but what we've gotten done now is we've gotten all of these uh, band boards, I guess we'll call them, installed here at the bottom, in the middle, and then at the top, we already had these. This is what the roof's sitting on. But this is what all of our chicken wire is gonna end up getting attached to. So these run all the way around. And what that's doing is that's giving us um, a surface, an even surface, at both high, middle, and low that uh, 
I guess you could say they're parallel with each other so the the chicken wire will lay flat so before when we just had the 4x4 there was this gap between our board at the top and the 4x4 so there wasn't a great way that we could come up with to attach both up here and to the 4x4 so we gapped it out with these 2x4s and then these 2x8s down at the bottom so then it will be even and we'll have a flat surface to attach to and so then that's the doorway to the run and then the doorway to the run over there we're using that last two by four down at the end to help us bend the chicken wire right now but we do have it so that'll get put up once we finish up the the other side hey girls focus what do you think and now what we've done is we've snapped a chalk line here at 36 inches from the top board to here because that's the the width of our chicken wire and so we're, we're going to try to do is make sure that our seam here because it'll be a three foot piece at the bottom a three foot piece at the top that our seam meets here in the middle and that's a good straight line because that's the one that you'll see you know the top one will be hidden up there underneath the gutter and eventually here once the predator barrier gets installed at the bottom that'll get dirt or mulch or something raked back over top of it so you won't see the bottom either so we're going to try to make sure that that middle line I said follows this chalk line and looks nice and even all the way down across well I made reference a few times that this probably was gonna be the last video but I started editing it all down and there's no way this is gonna be the last video because there's still so much to do and it's already getting pretty long so we're gonna go ahead and call that the end of this one so thanks for watching guys be sure to like comment and subscribe leave any thoughts down in the comment section hit that bell icon Get notifications of any new videos, and we'll catch you next time. See ya. Say bye, Dusty.